it seems like it doesn't seem like it, it is actually happening where technology is advancing exponentially at this point. You've got these kind of techno futurists like Ray Kurzweil or like maybe an Elon Musk or some, you know, other maybe Google or Facebook executives or whatever. And they might they, they think that, OK, there's going to be some sort of artificial intelligence that's going to reach a singularity and human beings are going to merge completely with machines and we're going to enter this new kind of they almost describe it like the second coming of Christ or something like this is going to save us. And this is going to bring us into a, a whole new level. You know, we're going to become like gods. I mean, and they, and they basically right. say that, I mean, they may not use those terms explicitly, but that's essentially what they're saying. And while I think that that might be a bit delusional, you know, I, I just wonder like what is happening? Like, you know, the, the whole thing about how the machines are now controlling us, the, the computers are now have taken over. I mean, we have whole systems that govern everything, and they're based off of computer systems. You know, we have a very large sector of our economy that is based purely on creating consumer products based on technological advances. Um, and mm-hmm. and my my I'm wondering, like, what is happening? Because you don't see this in any other species. You know, you have to wonder, like, what what may why did we go down this path? And it's almost like technology is this. Not maybe not technology, but maybe a technological civil civilization itself is it's like it's it has its own end game that it's working towards, and it's and I know that's just kind of a weird idea, but it's like this system is using human energy, human intelligence to kind of perpetuate itself into to grow itself and to become something. And and I don't think that it necessarily has our best interests in mind when it's doing this, but. I mean, what are your thoughts on that? Does that sound crazy to you that I said that? <laughs> no, no, no. I think actually that's on the right track. Okay. Um, yeah. So, in, so in my in my book, I I uh, tried to lay out some kind of a theory about how that might might be possible, and I think we actually have some some good arguments in favor of something like this. It, you know, when you look at sort of the large scale universal processes that are going on. Um, uh, every, everything kind of focuses around energy flows. Mm-hmm. And, uh, you know, even physics, all, all physics is really in terms of energy and energy densities and so forth. And the conditions of the universe seem to be such that there is this, like, super abundance of energy flows available. Mm-hmm. And it seems like whenever excess energy is present, that some kind of structure or order appears. Yeah. And what you see over the long sweep of time is, is, ener- is like the super abundant energies, let's say, of the Big Bang which is sort of co- coalescing or, or condensing down into structures, right? Like atoms yeah. and then building up the stars and planets and then life forms and so forth, and even on a technological system. Sure. And uh, so it seems like it's part, part of the whole sort of sweep of, of nature. And, and there's been some people out there, Eric Chasen is one guy in particular who's an astrophysicist, who's kind of said, you know, technology is on the same continuum of energy, increasing energy density. More energy flows through smaller and smaller packages uh and technology sort of on the same continuum with life forms and stars and planets and and everything else right and so it seems like it seems like the universe is kind of just moved because of this abundance of energy in the universe it's moving towards these higher and higher orders of complexity and it and it it this is just how it goes it goes into to matter and then to planets and the simple life forms and the higher life forms and then something beyond life forms which happens to be technological systems and then maybe something beyond that so mm-hmm. So, you know, we're sort of part of that process. We contribute to that process because we are that process. I mean, we are a product of those energy flows in the universe. And then we're also sort of, you know, building on this next layer, these technological systems, which even access more energy. Um, but that really suggests that if it really is, if it really is a universal kind of process, that it, it's like a law of nature or it's like evolution. Mm-hmm. And, and we really don't control it at all. We just sort of are part of it. And, uh, you know, I mean, that's kind of really interesting, but like really frightening and dangerous at the same time because, you know, you, you have no control over these things and you're just being swept along yeah. in, these, in these currents of uh, universal evolution. Right. And I, I think maybe we need to think about technology in, in that sense. And that puts a whole mm-hmm. new light on the whole problem. Well, you know, that sort of reminds me of um, he was this psychedelic philosopher, Terrence McKenna. And, yeah. uh, you know, he had this idea that 
that the universe is a novelty generating machine or something like that. So novelty as in more and more complex and unique things, uh, systems that come out of out of the universe is um, kind of, it, it seems like the universe is, is and as a really broad term, the universe, but the universe is, it's like on earth, the conditions were just right for biological life to emerge. And those biological life forms became more and more complex. And then eventually a species like human beings came along and somehow our conscious, our, our, our self-awareness and consciousness expanded. And then we were developing tools and we didn't really know what we were doing. You know, we were just kind of fumbling along. We're like, oh, we discovered this. Okay, this is how this works better and this better. Right. Until eventually we get to computer systems and, and in the internet and the internet of things, right? Where everything is now interconnected through this kind of wireless network. Right. Um, and it's it's like in his view it was like we're leading towards our destiny i guess like this is just the course of the universe like we're we're it just the universe is just meant to create more more complex things but but i, I mean I, I don't know i i don't know if um i guess the question that needs to be asked is like did we really consent to this did we really i mean yeah. We're born in this time, in this place. We don't really get to choose to be here, from what I can tell. <laughs> and right. you're just sort of here, and you're like, oh, wow, I'm in this really unique moment in, in history, I guess. And how do I feel about that? You know, like, how do I feel about the fact that things are changing so rapidly that you could see the change generation to generation? I mean, it's so rapid now. Exactly. And... And, and it doesn't seem like the effects are all that positive. So, you know, these futurists and people that are proposing like, yeah, it's going to be a be beautiful future. It's going to be amazing. But, but it's like, well, look at it now. I mean, is this really shaping up to be that beautiful, wonderful technological utopia that you've kind of been talking about? And I mean, I think that people need to be a little more critical of that. Yeah, you know, it's for sure they need to be more critical right because uh, again it's you know as as complexity increases and the power of the system increases and its autonomy mm -hmm. increases because it's complete uh, increasingly detached from human oversight right. and control the, you know the the potential for disaster just goes up uh, right. geometrically right when when the yeah. systems increase like this so yeah, you can always say theoretically we could have some wonderful new, uh, I don't know, video games or health care systems or whatever these mm -hmm. guys are talking about. But but the, but the magnitude of the potential for catastrophic outcomes uh, seems to be mm -hmm. far greater. And and you would have to have something approaching total and complete control of the system to just to just squeeze out of it all the good things that you liked and not have any of the bad consequences. And that's like literally right. impossible. So... Um, so we have to assume that that uh, of the multiple disaster scenarios that could happen, that you know one or more of these probably will, and, and we you know that's that's sort of the the guiding uh, outlook for people who take a little bit more pessimistic view of, of technological yeah. progress. So we need to be worrying about the worst case scenarios and not and not sort of you know smacking our lips at these uh, you know wonderful possibilities that they mm -hmm. that they're talking about. <laughs>